glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Here we are, Lord, in you. Glory to God in the highest. on earth in your will to all men. Hey, yeah, yeah. Glory to God in the highest. Yeah. Glory to God, you're the highest. worship God with me today. This is our afternoon pre-evening worship. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Glory to God in the highest. Yeah. Glory to God. In the, don't you love him? We love you today, Lord Jesus. Yeah, yeah. God in the highest peace on earth and God's will be to all men. Yeah. Come on, lift it up again. Yeah. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. You're the highest, Lord. We love you. Creator and maker of heaven and earth. Glory to God in the highest. Give and peace on earth. God's will be to all men. God's will be to all men. God's will be to all men. Hallelujah. The favor of the Lord is on us. The favor of the Lord. Uh, and glory to God in the highest. Somebody lift it up before heaven. Yeah. Glory to God in the He's the highest. Woo! Yeah, yeah. Glory to God in the highest. And peace on earth, God's will be to every man. Every tribe, tongue, and nation to the Gideon. And glory to God in the highest. When the angels appear to the shepherds, they sing glory to God in the highest. He's here. He's here. Yeah. And glory to God in the highest. Woo! Peace on earth and God's free. God's will be to you. Oh, the revelation of your will, Lord, be to all men. Yeah, God's will be to you. Revelation of God's will to every tribe, tongue, and nation, every child, teenager, millennial, young or old alike. Let, let the will of God be known. Yeah. will of God revealed and it's known to all men yeah. this was the angel's decree at the birth of Yeshua Hamashiach he said let they said let it be known peace on earth and God's will be to all men
Jesus, this is our afternoon worship. It's our pre-evening worship time for Jesus. Woo! Aren't you glad Monday, Mon we started with power streaming in the Holy Spirit. And glory to God in the highest. Yeah, yeah. And glory to God in the highest. God. Now I'm going to blame this on Debbie Schwab. Keith and Debbie are on here. Whichever one are both together. They, they wrote, come let us adore him because I'm doing the scripture from the Christmas passage. Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. of his presence, yeah. You are my Lord and my King, 
Melissa, one more time. Oh, come. Sharada's on here. She said, come on, Ken. Come. frankincense, gold, and myrrh. The offerings that they gave to baby Jesus. Wow. And we bring our gifts of worship. It reminds me of this. That you today in this street, we're anointing the Lord with our worship. Like the woman with the alabaster box. She came in with the alabaster vial. The costly vial of perf the bottle of perfume was probably all corked up and because it was costly it was expensive perfume maybe from her grandmother maybe she saved it up but she came in and check this out listen really close she anointed our lord with with her perfume in the same way every time we worship we anoint the even in his resurrected state we are anointing the Lord with our worship. That is super precious. Are you kidding? No, I'm not. I'm going to say it again. It's touching my heart, Bob. Wow. After all these 45 years of leading worship, I still love to come and use my tiny little voice with my tiny little hands. <laughs> Playing my little keyboard with my tiny little vocal cord vocal cords which look like hummingbird wings and we anoint and we anoint you Lord with our worship we anoint you Lord with our love we anoint you Lord right now with all our worship, Lord, we anoint you, Lord. With our love, we're here today, anointing you, Lord, with our worship. Anointing you, Lord, with our worship. We were created to praise. We were created to praise. Oh, yes, we anoint you, Lord, with our worship. We anoint you, Lord, with our songs. We anoint, thanks, Lord, that you made it possible. This is our honor on this earth that we get to anoint you with costly perfume called our worship every day. It's our choice in every way to worship and adore you. That's why we sang this afternoon. Oh, come, oh, come, let us adore anointing the Lord. We get daily to anoint the Lord. Daily we get to anoint the Lord with our worship, with our worship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To anoint the Lord like the woman. I, I can't wait to meet that woman on the other side. Uh, some say it was Mary, it was the prostitute. They, they, they don't know for sure, but I go, oh, I, I was going to say, what was in your heart? You crashed the disciples' party at Simon the leper's house. <laughs> she came and walked right by him, went right to Jesus, reclining at table. In Eastern tradition, probably popped up, propped up with a couple of pillows, eating at a low table, and a woman was never, a strange woman was never to approach a man. Middle East custom like that because it had sexual overtones. <laughs> but she walked in 
out of the abundant overflow of the love of her heart. Hear this phrase, guys, today. The lady with the alabaster box, she it was out of she couldn't stop herself. She couldn't stop herself. Out of the abundant overflow of her heart and her love for Jesus for
This is how I fight my, come on everybody, lift it up. how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. Yeah, Lord, this is how I fight my battle. This, it's in your presence. Yeah, this is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. This is how it's wonderful, awesome. Remember your God who's great and awesome. This is what Nehemiah said. Remember your God who is great and he's awesome. Two different Hebrew words. Remember our God. If you have any fear ever come on you. Remember our God. Remember our God who is great. Who is great and awesome. Remember our God. He said, remember our God. Always remember our God. You are great and awesome. Greatly to be praised. Come on, lift it up. He said, remember our God. Remember our God who is great and awesome and greatly to be praised. Yeah, remember our God. Remember our God. Remember our God. You guys ready? Second verse. In a valley. It didn't say the valley, but in a valley, anywhere in the world or anywhere that, that you, you're having oppression coming against you, things are not good. It says, in a valley, I know that you're with me. Surely, goodness and mercy follow me. So my weapons are praise and thanks. What was that? So my weapons our praise and thanksgiving. What? So my weapons are praise and thanksgiving. And this is how I fight my battle. Do it all again. In a valley, I know that you're with me. In a valley, I know that you're with me. And surely, your goodness and your mercy follow me. So my weapons are praise and thanksgiving. You see, my weapons are praise and thanksgiving. This is how I fight my battles. With your presence, Lord, not on my own. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah. Yeah. And I believe you've overcome. And I will live my song of praise for what you've done. song of praise for what you've done, yeah, for what you've done. This is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. In your presence, this is how I with your presence. This is how I, with and through and in your presence, Lord. Oh, oh, they wrote a bridge. There's there's still a bridge left to do. It may look, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. surrounded by the enemy, but I'm surrounded
surrounded by your wraparound presence, your wraparound presence from the Passion Bible. He says it, the wraparound presence of, I've got that wraparound presence. What do you got? I said, I, I've got the wraparound presence. What do you guys got? We've all got that wrapper. It's his presence wrapped around us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Somebody lift your hands and your heart and worship the living God. Sing some kind of new song. Sing some kind of song of Lord, we sing to you in the name, in the name, in the name of Everybody, get your Bibles open to Nehemiah 4. I'm doing something different today. Um, quite frankly, man, Matt and I have been swamped out getting the property ready for the bulldozer driver. It's a, a wide 55K, I'm claiming it. <laughs> and uh, <coughs> we've been super busy. Um, I finally had to stop at 2.30 and go, okay, I've been out here since about 8.30. <laughs> but uh, what I felt in the Lord is that I'm going to give you the prophetic, actually the scripture that goes with the prophetic word today. And I'm going to stop playing. Carla's not here today. She had some stuff she needed to take care of. She goes, oh, man, thank God. I've got to go mail these taxes. And so um, what I'm going to do is give you Nehemiah 4, the scripture that came after the prophetic word. There may be new people on here today. So here we go. The builders are building again. So the voice of the Lord, the best I remember, it was about 10 years ago when he said, Kent, you've got to get this word out to people. And I feel it's super timely and it's been renewed. He said there's three phases, phrases that God kept speaking speaking to me, it was over about a seven and a half day period. The builders were building and they were doing a good job. But then the builders stopped building because of hard circumstances and artificial ceilings. Tell the builders for me, they must start building again because I've lifted all delay all delay has ended concerning my times and my seasons. So let me go through all three of them. Some of you have been hearing it. We'll renew it. This word, when it came to me, I was in the prayer room <coughs> here at Destiny Church in St. Louis. And the Lord said, the builders were building, Kent, and they were doing a great job. I went, okay, Lord, we got a good rating from Almighty God. We didn't get fair, poor, 
uh, messed up, marginal. He said, the builders were doing a good job, but were told me they quit, they stopped. And I was a white baby. I'm a white person. Why? Let's get down to resolution on it. Two and a half days later, the Lord said, the builders stopped building, Kent, because of hard circumstances and artificial ceilings. <clears throat> and it, it really bothered me, the, hard, the artificial ceilings, because I know what hard circumstances are, but we should always be building. And the Lord, we're Nehemiah builders, even in the New Testament. The whole spirit of that comes over. So the builders stopped building because of hard circumstance and artificial ceilings. And uh, the artificial ceilings was self-induced. It was something they put over their heads, each believer, because <clears throat> they felt like they weren't good enough or not worthy enough or they had failed too many times. But the Lord said, tell the builders for me, they must start building again because all delay has ended concerning my times and my seasons. So Nehemiah, one of the greatest builders in the Bible, a powerful forerunner, he's a model for us for what we can do. And so in Nehemiah 4, there's five questions the builders have to answer in Nehemiah 4. The five questions that every believer on this stream today, you'll have to answer, and probably they'll come up a couple times a year. So when Sanballat, Nehemiah 4, verse 1, now it came about that when Sanballat heard that we were rebuilding the wall, he became furious and very angry and mocked the Jews. I went, Lord, my God, how'd you like to have an enemy coming against you? A Samaritan, a Hor Horonite is what, what he was. He was furious on one hand and very angry on the other. Furious on one hand and very angry on the other. And he mocked the Jews. So if you had an enemy coming against you and you got to choose, you could either take furious, um, furious or a very angry. Wh which one would, would you do? Well, I don't want either one of them. I don't want either one of those in my life. And... Uh, <clears throat> When I saw this, I went, man, Lord Jesus, what, what do we, we, we have like demonic stuff come against us. We have different things come against us. But, um, and you have people in the natural that mock you or do different things. Well, Nehemiah is keeping record. And so we click over, focus up now on verse two. Sanballat spoke in the presence of his brothers and the wealthy men of Samaria now, the wealthy men of Samaria included the army of he was like a prince over a pro province now. So he spoke in the presence of his brothers and the wealthy men, the army of Samaria, and said five things. You guys ready? In part B of Nehemiah 4.2, he reels off five questions. Five questions in one small passage of Scripture in his ticked offness, and in his fury and very angry because he felt like Nehemiah was taking his glory or his thunder. Here's what they said. I'm going to do all five in a row and just kind of put yourself in with Nehemiah and the builders. He spoke in the presence of his brothers and the wealthy men and said these five questions. What are these feeble Jewish people doing anyway? Number two, are they going to restore it for themselves? And number three, can they offer sacrifices? And four, can they finish it in a day? And then number five, check it now. Can they revive the stones from the dusty rubble, even the burnt ones? So when I taught this on Sunday morning, as a part of the prophetic word, the builders are building again. You're going to start building up to Thanksgiving, through Christmas. Let's get a leg up. Let's get ready for 2022 and 20, where the builders are building again. 
So I asked the church on Sunday morning, we've done about an hour of worship, we've done church-wide prayer, and I come to about a 30-minute message, which is what I'm doing today. Now, we're still going to do the narration for chapter 4. This chapter is so important to me, I said, I'm just going to do the message, and then we'll, it'll make more sense tomorrow when we do the narration. So I asked the church to follow along with me, and they have to answer each question, each of the five questions, yes, no, or both. So now I want you to track with me. If you're answering these five questions, if you were Nehemiah or what some of his builders and Sam Bella came up, what are these feeble Jews doing? Are we feeble? Is it yes? Is it no? Or is it both? Well, it depends on what you're looking at it. The feeble Jews, I don't mind being called feeble because his strength is perfected in my weakness. And yet it says, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So when I answer, the people, it, you could tell on a Sunday morning, they're all thinking it's like Sunday school. Well, you can call us feeble. I don't mind you calling me names. But I'm going to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, even though his strength is perfected, even though I might be weak in the natural, in the spirit, I'm strong. That's number one. Then we go to number two. Are they going to restore this wall for themselves and the gates of the city of Jerusalem? Now, wait a minute, bro. You got, you got on me now. You got on my ambition. You got on my heart a desire to serve the Lord. I'm not doing anything for myself anymore. <clears throat> when I got saved and spirit-filled in 1972 and 74, I stopped doing anything for myself. I went I will restore this as unto the Lord for the Lord. So the, the, the answer to number two, are they going to restore it for themselves, the wall and the gates of the city? Is it yes? Is it no? Or is it both? Well, no, for me, it's absolutely not. We're not doing anything in our own strength anymore. And we're not, we don't have a bunch of uh, projects, godless projects that we're doing. So the answer to number two is no, we're not doing it for ourselves we're doing it for the Lord. In the one uh, <clears throat> commentary, it says, Nehemiah, making the money he was, as the cup bearer's king, he took his wealth he had amassed as being, it could have been six to ten years he was the cup bearer of the king. He took it over to Jerusalem, and he used it for whatever they needed to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. So, number one, we're feeble, yes and no. Are both, but number two, the answer is no, we are not. We're not going to restore anything for ourselves. Okay, now we come to number three. Can they offer, I'm still in verse two, the B section of verse two. Can they offer sacrifices? Wow. So they're just rebuilding it. And uh, Sanballat was trying to figure out, you know, wait a minute, they restore the center of worship. He had a plan to move worship to Mount Gerizim so his good-looking uh, daughter could marry the high priest's son and back like in medieval days. So can they offer sacrifices? Is it yes? Is it no? Or is it both? Well, I got to tell you a story on number three. I was in a church uh, of a couple hundred people maybe 250, 280, and when I got there after the worship week and Sunday morning, a goth kid, a goth guy shows up, trench coat, black fingernail polish. He's sitting in the back. I mean, I recognize him, industrial gothic, straight up as soon as I saw him, and he kind of comes in and flops down on the back pew, and I thought, oh, awesome. He's at least here. And I said, I'm going to make a beeline for him and say hey to him, give him some free CDs. I mean, he showed up at church. And, you know, he was just kind of laying over during worship, and, you know, he kind of lifted his hands a couple times. I go, okay, I don't believe it. But uh, then we, they took the offering, the local church ties and offerings. Then I got into this message, and he kind of perked up, like, when I got to these five points. And he, he was looking at me very intently, and I says, and can we offer sacrifices or not? And he jumps to his feet and says, absolutely not, because Jesus Christ... He did the ultimate sacrifice. The answer is no. <laughs> the whole church shut down for a couple of minutes. They freaked out because I guess they had never, he had never done anything like that before. 
And I said, bro, just for that, you get a free book and free CDs. I'll see you at the CD table after the meeting. The whole meeting came to a, a halt. It was awesome. It got quiet. And I said, say it again, bro. He goes, no, Jesus offered the greatest sacrifice of all. And you know, then he sat down. It was unbelievable. So, yeah, well, but for us answering it today, he did offer, so the answer is no, we cannot offer sacrifices except Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, I want you to offer yourselves as a living sacrifice, your whole self, daily offer yourself as a living sacrifice. So I'm going to say it's both. I mean, and your answer is your answer. It doesn't have to be my answer. How are you guys doing? I want to see some hearts. People are thinking, Matt, look at them. They're going, I don't know what's going on today. Uh, so we get to number four. So number one, what do these feeble Jewish people think they're doing? And I don't mind being called feeble because I'm strong in the Lord and the power of his might, but I'm also his strength's perfect in my weakness. No problem. Are they going to restore it for themselves? Absolutely not. We're doing it as unto the Lord. Can they offer sacrifices? Well, yes and no. Can they finish it in a day? Everybody over 45 years of age answer this question. I want to see your, before I give you mine, is it yes, is it no, is it both? It's a simple answer. Everybody over 45 and 50, because see, we've been around for a while, and we, we know we've been around the mountain about a thousand times. Can they finish anything in a day? And the answer is no. <laughs> it's not even yes, it's no. It's can they finish in a day? Rome was not built in a day. Anything of lasting value is not built in a day. And praise be to God, when we look at this, the marathon runner wins the race. You know, the, the, the tortoise and the hare story, that rabbit kept taking naps, man, and the turtle, the tortoise beat him across the finish line. That's what you get, Mr. Rabbit. Here's what I'm saying. I was so fast when I was younger. I played baseball, basketball. I was a swimmer. And listen, in Little League Baseball, we stole second base, third base. Stole the, One of the greatest things is to steal home base. Oh, my God, home plate. Oh, my God. And the other team hates it really bad. So I was really fast. I'm not fast anymore, but I am a marathon runner. How many of you are going to be here until the end serving the Lord Jesus Christ? The marathon runner wins the race. So number four, can they finish in a day? No, but we're going to keep working and building. The builders are building again. And then we get to number five. And you guys better have the right answer on this or you'll get a panking. <laughs> That's a spanking without a S on it, what my granddaughters would say. Can they revive the stones? Oh, my God from the dusty rubble, even the burnt ones. Now, he's yelling this out. He, he, they went up to the wall. You're going to see Nehemiah's response in verses 5 and 6. We're in verses 1 and 2 still. So he's up there. What are you feeble Jewish people doing anyway? You're going to restore it for yourself? Can you offer a sacrifice? He was like furious and very angry. He had steam coming out of his ears. Then the last question, can they revive the stones from the dusty rubble, even the burnt ones? And let's all say it together. Yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. There are so many burnt stones this coming Sunday morning. They're sitting outside of church. They're burnt out. They're ticked off. They're angry. Their ushers, their elders, their children's church workers, their worship team members, they had enough. The people, you know, just spit on them and people abused them and used them, then said you weren't good enough and put them out to pasture. Listen, there are so many burnt stones per region that if any church anywhere would pray for the return and the restoration of burnt stones, you would add 50 to 80 to 100 people right back to your church in three to six months. I know you didn't hear me, so let me say it again. The answer to number five, can they revive the stones from the dusty rubble, even the burnt ones? Absolutely. And Jesus, oh my God, Jesus says yes. 
Jesus said, Jesus is saying right now in his throne, oh, I feel it, it's so right, can't go after the burnt stones. You got the valley of dry bones, Ezekiel 37, but then you have Nehemiah 4, the, the burnt stones, the Nehemiah burnt stone. Let's, let's go after burnt stones. Everybody knows four or five, and you can call one or two, pray about it, pray about it, and then call one or two on the phone, a burnt stone. It, they, you haven't seen them for probably a couple years or 10 years, maybe 20 years, but they've been on your heart and your mind, <clears throat> and what you're going to do is call them up and say, I love you. I miss you. Don't hang up. <laughs> what? No, I, I love you. I miss you. Don't hang up. And maybe you'll hear click and, you know, you have to do it a couple of days later. If we actually go before the Lord and we ask him to restore the burnt stones, he'll do it. I don't want him coming back to some boring, stiff church somewhere but let's pray burnt stones back into a life-giving church where they're actually following the Holy Spirit. Or maybe it's a life-giving Bible study. Or maybe it's a life-giving, you know, home meeting. But the burnt stones, these people have already been born again. They're already spirit-filled, and they already know the Word of God. And they have experience in worship and living in His presence. Burnt stones, burnt stones. Father, we ask you in Jesus' name, repair, restore, and bring back the burnt stones, the ones that are hurt. Wow, fairly cool. We answered all five questions. And again, my answer may not be your answer. You can, you can have a different one. But what a great pop quiz on Monday today. Then verse 3, now Tobiah the Ammonite was near him, and he said, well, even if what you're building, Nehemiah, if a fox would jump on it, a fox would break down your stupid stone wall. Wow, what, what a rude dog is that, Tobiah the Ammonite. Even if what they were building, if a fox would jump on it, he would break down their stone wall. I got news for you, bro. Look, look what happens in verse 5 and 6. He, he had to be close enough to Nehemiah. He must have been up on the wall, maybe... 20 yards back, because Nehemiah heard him. And I appreciate Nehemiah's response in the Old Testament. <laughs> Lord, he prayed, do not forgive their iniquity, and let not their sin be blotted out before you. I'm with you, Nehemiah. I'm all, all about it. <laughs> this is not the New Testament yet. This is the Old Testament. For they've demoralized the builders. Uh-oh, stop right there. Do not demoralize people that are building for the Lord any way, shape, or form. Could you say it again, Kent? Yes, I can. Do not demoralize people during worship, during children's church, when they're building. If they have a vision or a dream from God, help them with it. Because God doesn't like it when you demoralize the builders that are building for his glory. Whew. I tell you what, I've seen some worship leaders kind of whip people while they're leading worship, uh, you might want to rethink that, bro, or sis. Don't, don't do that. Because the bottom line is that you don't want to ever demoralize people that are trying to work for the Lord. That is really good sharing, Kent, I know. And that's why we're stopping for a minute. Because, I mean, this word, you get in the military, you start demoralizing soldiers, you, you'll be put out. You'll be put out in a heartbeat. And at verse 6 and again, we'll narrate the whole chapter and really focus on this, but this was so vital and important to me. I told Matt and Carla, I said, I'm going to do my teaching that's attached to the prophetic word builders are building again. Here we go. Verse 6. So we built the wall. Nehemiah, did you build the whole thing? He says, yeah, we built the whole wall, and it was joined together to half of its height. For the people had a heart to work, to go to work. What? This is a pretty famous scripture. So we built the wall. We built a wall, and we built it, and we built And the whole wall around Jerusalem was joined together to half of its height. For the people had a heart and a mind to go to work. <clears throat> they went to work. They went to work. Now, listen, I'm not going to work willy-nilly. I'm not going to cast my lot casually. 
But if some kind of work, you know, building thing comes up for the Lord, a dream or a vision, and I get a clear green light, from, I'm in. I'm in till the end. We're going to build it. I don't care what it takes. But just to casually cast your lot, to just, I, I, you know, a lot of people are distract, highly distractible, like me. <laughs> and if you start, well, what, in my 20s, I did some stuff I would never do again. I, got, I became a part of stuff. I, was, I was helped build that. I went, okay, this is going south because we didn't quantify or qualify this before heaven. Not smart. But he said, we rebuilt the wall. And the whole wall was joined together to half of its height, for the people had a heart and a mind to work. We kept at it. Another translation, the message, and the God's Word translation. Nehemiah said, we kept at it, that is, rebuilding this wall of Jerusalem and the gates. Repairing and rebuilding the wall because the people had a heart for the work. It was such a God thing to be doing this. The people worked with determination, for the people were working hard. So we built a wall and joined it all together, and the heart of the people was excited to be doing the work. We did this much because the people worked with all of their heart. This spirit of unity and all of their heart, um, again, the church needs to get a clue on this and actually put some prayer and worship intercession if you're going to call your whole church to do a, a project, a purpose, a, a dream, or a vision, let's make sure everybody's on board. Talk it out. Pray it through. Because all of your heart, with all of your heart, will get the job done. And let me see the other side, Matt, real quick. <clears throat> and isn't this amazing? Most people, when I do this, I, can't, I had no idea there were five questions all in a row tucked in the B section of verse 2 of Nehemiah 4. So verse 7, when Sanballat, Tobiah the Arabs, <clears throat> and the Ammonites and the Astadites heard what we were doing and the work in Jerusalem went on, and that the breaches were being closed, again, they were very angry. Now let's get down to it. What was wrong with Sanballat, Tobiah, and the Ammonites, <clears throat> uh, well, and Ashdodites, Nehemiah came in and took their thunder. They were considering, I'm going to explain it tomorrow, they were considering moving the, wor the center of worship from Jerusalem to Mount Gerizim, the Mount of Blessings, so they could control it. The fight has always been and always will be about worship. Who's doing the worship? Who gets the glory in the worship? Does it go to the Lord and who can control it? All along, different leaders have tried to, con con they've thought, we're going to control this. And you see it even in the American church today. Overseas, I don't think it's as heavy. So the response before we have to get off this dream today, verse 7, everybody focus up. Verse 9, but we prayed to our God. Nehemiah, what you do? Well, we prayed to our God. They actually stopped what they were doing. The whole of Jerusalem, all the builders came together. This is so universal. We, we just have to get this deep in our heart. Let us continue to pray to our God on every aspect of what we're doing. And because of Sanballat, Tobiah, the Ammonites, and the Ashdodites, we set up a guard against them day and night. Nehemiah is not fooling. He's doing the spiritual stuff, but in the natural. This is where, uh, you know, they had a stone in one hand and a sword in the other, that a, 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 you know, rebuilding the wall. Because of Sanballat and, and Tobiah and the Ammonites, we set up a guard against them day and night. And thus in Judah it was said, in Judah, the strength of the burden bearers is failing, yet there is much rubbish and dust and we are un ourselves are unable to rebuild the wall. And our enemies said, they will not know or see until we come among them. We're going to kill them and put a stop to the work. Wow. I mean, straight up. They, there's no uh, subterfuge or mystery in this. They had a plan to come kill Nehemiah. and all the. Uh, you're always going to have an enemy. But the Lord, when verse 12, when the Jewish people who lived near them came, 
they heard what Sanballat and Tobiah had said. They came up to visit. They put their life on the line. And they came and told us not once, not three times, not eight times. They came and told us ten times what they were planning to do. So then Nehemiah, verse 13, I stationed men in the lowest parts of the space behind the wall. The exposed bare places, check this out, you guys, super heavy. Nehemiah stationed the people in families. Oh, my God. That's such a phrase out of this passage. I stationed the people, even with women and children, the sons with dads and moms, I stationed the people in families with their swords, their spears, and their bows. And even the children and the women, they learned we have to protect ourselves in the natural. Bro, swords, spears, and bows. I don't think you want to be on the front end of an arrow coming out of a bow back even in that day. Verse 14, and I'll close with this now. When I saw their fear, I rose and spoke to the nobles the officials, and the rest of the people. This is what Nehemiah said. Thank you, Nehemiah. The man of faith, the man of the hour, that came back from a high-level income, cut bare to the king, to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and the gates with the king's timbers. Remember, he had the king's letters, he had the king's timbers, and he had the king's horsemen, which represent permission from Jesus, king's letters. We have the resources of the Lord, king's timbers. And then we have the king's horsemen for protection and to bring all that timber back to Jerusalem. When I saw their fear, I rose up. He stood in front of them. He spoke to the nobles, the officials, and the rest of the people. Do not be afraid of them, which are, you know, miles away from us, even if they try to come up and kill us because Remember, the Lord is great and awesome. Wow. I, I mean, he's putting it out there, buddy. He's believing something about Psalm 91, the protection of the Lord. He said, I want you to remember and think on the Lord. Think on. I'm sure they had songs they were singing during the day back, and they're probably singing psalms on the wall. Think of this. They were singing, speaking the word. Remember the Lord who is great and awesome. This Thanksgiving, this Christmas, the last seven, eight weeks, whatever we have before the turning of a new year, remember the Lord who is great and awesome. That was number one, but number two, he said, and when the trumpet sounds, he said, I want you to fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your houses. A amazing. Because see, one of the guys, his daughters showed up and started doing the work. So they were there in families. There were some women there. There were some daughters there. Uh, but he said, fight for your brothers, your sons, and your daughters. Man, the hearts are flying, man. Well, I hope you enjoy this as much as I enjoyed doing it today. This is preparing us for the full-blown narration of Nehemiah 4 tomorrow. This is, to me, we've had an incredible year, you guys, on this stream. We did the book of Hebrews in the summer. We rolled right into the book of Romans in the fall. And now, I'm calling it Thanksgiving and Christmas season. It's just right here on us. We're in Nehemiah 4, the builders. We are Nehemiah builders. And the builders are going to start building again in Jesus' name. And we're going after the burnt stones as upset as they are, as burnt out as they are, we're going after the burnt stones in Jesus' name. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is, you make a way where there is no way. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are and that is who you are that is who you are 
that is who you are that is who you are that is who you are God that is who you are that is who you are even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't see it you're working even when I don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working come on lift that up again don't see it you working even when I don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working even when I don't even when I don't see it you working even when I don't feel it you working you never stop you never stop working way in the darkness my God that is who you are yeah, yeah. way maker miracle worker promise keeper I love it we love it this is who you are 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 this is who you this is who you are. Come on, lift it up. Yeah. This is, Lord Jesus, this is who you are right now. Sitting on your throne, this is who you are. This is who you are. There's nothing too hard for the Lord. All things are possible because you're the way maker, Lord. We turn it all over to you. We love you and thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit in operation, leading us and guiding us on and on and on for your glory. This is who you are. Jesus, this is who you are. This is who you are, King Jesus. This is who you are. This is who... Thank you, Lord, for revealing who you were in the New Testament and then to our own hearts into kingdom life and into spirit-filled life for your glory. We thank you for this powerful message in Nehemiah 4. We are Nehemiah builders and we will start building again. We will not be put off any longer. You've lifted all delay concerning your promise your provision and your prosperity. We're going to start building, Father, in the name of, we're going to build right into 2022 and have a two-year run right into 2023. In Jesus' name, I want somebody to say, yes, Lord, amen. We blew it up for Jesus today. He's awesome. And his word is awesome as well. Remember our God, who is great and awesome. Well, I'm going to see you tomorrow doing with Miss Carla will be in Nehemiah 4 doing the expanded version of the narration. Look ahead and see what's happening. All right, God bless you guys. Peace out. Shalom. Shalom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs>